the NATO is back and the NATO is back on track. This is the message which was sent out loud and clearly um, from the NATO summit uh, June 14th. Um, and it's a particular pleasure um, to have Mirsha Joana with me today. Mirsha is a NATO Deputy Secretary General, and not only this, he's also the founding president of Espen Institute Romania, and thus a very good friend um, of us, um, of me and of um, Espen Germany. Thank you so much, Mirsha, for being here today. My pleasure. So I am seeing you smiling. Um, did the NATO summit fulfill your expectations and hopes? Yes, uh, it did. Uh, and we are smiling not only because we are happy professionally, but because we are very content uh, with the direction set by our leaders for the future of this alliance of ours. The decision they took uh, um, are basically paving the way for the next decade, NATO 2030, that's what Secretary General uh, Stoltenberg uh, uh, informed by the reflection process. Uh, and I would like to thank also Thomas de Maizière, who was one of the co-chairs, and also to thank Germany uh, for being so active, like always, uh, in, in, in trying to find the right tone uh, for this summit. So we are happy, a little bit tired. Um, but we are, we are really very content uh, with the outcome and we are looking forward to renewing uh, our efforts to fulfill uh, the important uh, job that we uh, got as a task from our leaders. So looking at you, you don't look tired at all. Um, you look rather energetic, I have to say. Um, <laughs> so when we read the summit declaration, um, what is it we should uh, look at? What is particularly noteworthy? Listen, there are two pieces of, um, of decisions of our leaders. It was the final communique, I think 79 uh, points. All of them uh, carefully uh, negotiated among all allies. So that's a common position of this alliance. And there was a, a distinct uh, negotiation on NATO 2030, the agenda, which is, if you want, uh, the more operational strategic and operational decisions of our leaders. Also, our leaders looked into some decisions that were more specific for, for, for the summit. Uh, we adopted a new cyber defense policy, and cyber is an immensely complex uh, issue, an operational domain for NATO. I know that Aspen Deutschland is engaging a lot on technology and in digital. I hope we'll be able to co cooperate on that one as well with, with the Institute. Um, there was a, a, an important decision uh, on uh, upgrading the resilience um, uh, commitment uh, of the alliance. Again, resilience, especially after the pandemic, is one of the critical uh, topics where NATO already has an expertise. We also have approved for the first time an action plan on the security implications of climate change, another big uh, dimension. Also, our leaders adopted uh, an important document on fighting uh, uh, sexual abuse in, in conflict. Uh, again, the portion of human security, which, which is there. So these were basically the three uh, pieces of the decisions. The final communique, which is public, of course, NATO 2030, and these uh, decisions. I also have to say uh, something that is uh, already in public domain. Uh, I mentioned cyber. Cyber was adopted in uh, Warsaw in 2016 at a summit in Warsaw uh, six years ago already as the fourth operational domain of NATO. Of course, land, air, and maritime, cyber. And in London in 2019, our leaders decided that space is becoming the fifth operational domain. So if you look somewhere in the long communique, you also see that as we have done with cyber, a few years ago, we also, the, our leaders decided that an eventual attack from space, severe enough on NATO soil territory or infrastructures could trigger Article 5. So I'm saying that also space is becoming, together with resilience, with cyber, uh, a very important uh, new dimension uh, of, of, of the alliance. 
So you could say that NATO is modernizing itself uh, also with regard to the threats it's going to deal with? Listen, uh, Stormy, uh, why is this successful uh, alliance so successful? We always say with great pride, and for me it's a huge pride uh, to be part uh, and to be at the leadership position in the most successful alliance in history. It's, 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 it's based on two fundamental ingredients. The number one is the enduring value of our values, of our common values. And this summit, in a way, reconfirmed the importance of our values as if you want the glue that makes a difference between a traditional military uh, alliance, a unique uh, political and security alliance like NATO. The second one, which is the other important ingredient for this enduring success of NATO, is our permanent DNA embedded capacity to adapt to evolving circumstances. Mm -hmm. And today, after the end of the Cold War, this is probably, and, and I think this is, we agree, all of us, it's one of the most dynamic, complex, convoluted, uh, and, and interesting moments in human history. So this is why adaptation and values, mm -hmm. agility and perseverance, um, believing in what's really fundamental for our democratic values in the epical fight against autocratic uh, counter propositions of how to organize human societies. That's in fact, the summit is also about this, which is reconfirming our values and uh, broadening the definition of security and making sure that we adapt uh, uh, NATO uh, to this new world, which is so, so complex. So you have a very clear vision uh, for NATO 2030 um, and beyond, I'm pretty sure. What would you like the NATO to be in, let's say, 2030 or 2040? Um, and uh, how can we get there? Listen, the business of NATO, and that's why we were created. And that's why I believe we are now even more relevant than, than ever, is that we, we represent a unique constellation of 30 democratic nations in North America and Europe. Together, we represent more than 50% of global GDP. Together, we represent up to 60% of global defense spending in the world. Together, we have the most innovative ecosystem uh, of open free societies in the world. Uh, with, the, with the challenges that we are facing in the, now, today, and tomorrow, no country alone no continent alone can cope with these pressures. We need each other more than ever. Also, because uh, Secretary General Stoltenberg asked me on his behalf to pay even more special attention to the relationship between NATO and the EU, let me say one word. The NATO-EU cooperation, strategic partnership, the level of ambition which is reflected in the documents at this summit, then I know that will be uh, becoming even more visible and tangible in the period ahead is also incredibly important for our democratic societies to be able to, 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 to withstand immense pressure from, from, from the others. So I'm saying that as I anticipate the future, as we see it at least here from NATO headquarters, we see a period of intense geopolitical competition. Mm -hmm. We also see a need of cooperation and our desire to with with to withheld international norms and multilateral institutions is the only way to organize as strategic architecture this very complicated world speaking of russia and china there's a lot of russia language in the communique uh, we hope that the the meeting uh, that took uh, took place yesterday between the American and the Russian president will also indicate both the fact that we are exceptionally firm in deterrence and defense against Russia's aggressive actions, but also willing to cooperate and willing to, to, to have dialogue with Russia on things like arms control or climate change, like conflicts uh, in, in Ukraine, in Syria, in Libya, in the Caucasus. There are many places that we need. Iran is another important topic as we are also willing not to transform China into an enemy. This is not the point. And here the voice, the wise voice of Chancellor Merkel around the NATO table was like always, 
very influential and very robust in, in, what, in what she said. So we need to consider the implications, security implications of the rise of China, while not getting into a logic of Cold War. This is not the business of NATO to start a new Cold War. We had enough of the one we had uh, until a few decades ago. So uh, I'm, I'm confident uh, that we have uh, reached the right tone. President Biden's first appearance at the NATO summit was exceptionally positive. You have uh, seen in the media his uh, talk about the sacrosanct nature of Article 5. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that he met the EU leaders just after the NATO summit, it's again great news. Finishing 17 years of trade uh, skirmishes on aviation subsidies on both sides is tremendous good news. The uh, Trade and uh, Technology Council between the US and EU is tremendously good news. It's also good for NATO. Mm -hmm. And I think our friends in the EU are happy about the results of the NATO summit, as we are very happy uh, uh, on the way in which European Union is forging its own future and its own destiny. We are two sides of the same coin, Stormy. NATO EU, we are part of the same uh, complex uh, of values, interests, and geographies uh, that keep us, keep us together. Thank you so much, Mirsha. Um, it fills me with hope listening to you. Um, and we will keep close watch on what is happening in NATO and with the Alliance. Um, and I certainly hope that we have ample opportunity to cooperate with Aspen Romania and also um, Aspen Germany um, and in the Aspen family. Thank you so much for being here today with me. Thank you so much. Vielen Dank. <laughs> Thank you.